she's inspired me to really start to understand this Latinx movement. I just moved here. From where? Colombia. What part of Mexico is that? Congratulations on your film. I really enjoyed seeing this uh, brother movie. It kind of reminded me of my sister and I. I was kind of like the book smart kid and she was the rebel. Who's, who's older, younger? Do you have a young sister? I was the older one, the book smart. Okay, cool. Yeah, Carly is the older one. Book yeah, smart. so I was like, oh, I can totally relate. You know, <laughs> the parents are harder on one and then the other. So totally. totally relatable. So can you tell me how the project came about? Um, it actually started as a short film, right? So did you make the short film in the hopes of getting financing for a feature film? That, that's exactly what happened, yeah. So about six years ago, um, my brother did a, well, no, yeah. Six years ago, uh, our director and writer, Esteban and Eric, they were watching one of my brother's films called The Kings of Summer. And in that film, um, he has a scene where he speaks uh, Spanish. And obviously the Colombian accent is very easy. As a Colombian, especially, it's very easy to tell like, oh, wow, this is a Colombian accent. Mm -hmm. So they tripped out. They were like, yo, this dude is Colombian. That's crazy, I had no idea. So they did some research. You know, Moises Arias, they, they found out he had a brother. Um, and then they were like, oh, you know, they told us a story, it's a very funny story. They were on the beach or something. And they were like, yo, we should write a story for these two. Um, and it's basically, you know, based off of their lives and what they have mm -hmm. experienced. And we shot the film and we went yeah. to a festival. And after the festival run, we, we uh, were able to get financing six years later to shoot the film in Colombia, get people like Diane and Wilmer excited because they could see a short. And um, yeah, to be able to premiere at Sundance is a really full circle, really beautiful moment. And you mentioned Wilmer Valderrama and Diana Guerrero. They play your parents in the movie. So did you guys, because you're in the Hollywood scene, did you uh, approach them to, no, to be them? No, no? I, think, I think they were excited. I mean, Callie, Ka Ka Callie's an interesting situation that Mateo can, can, can say because it was happenstance. Like we just happened to go to her concert with uh, George Smith and saw us down in Eddie there and, and they were like, yo, um, we wanna, Mateo was like, what are you guys doing here? And he was like, yo, we potentially wanna see if Callie's down to play your girlfriend in the movie. They, they had already been in talks with her team and with her, with her about potentially being in the film. But um, no, the, the Diane and Wilmer was definitely, you know, it was probably Esteban and Eddie and mm -hmm. Macro, they were really the ones that were, uh, that they got that and we were so excited because they both set a tone Diane is a very good friend of ours now um, she was amazing she was more of like a homie to us even though she plays a mo our, our mother in the film one of the coolest people ever and then Wilmer was just very funny very necessary energy that we were missing on set he was only there for I think two weekends or so because mm -hmm. he was flying out he was working on something else um, but when he was there he was just such a great presence and like a really you know what I mean he, obviously the father figure in the film and he kind of had like this you know, father figure grounded type of energy when he was on the set that kind of brought the best out of all of us. And it's funny to see because now he's a father for the first time. So Crazy. I'm sure he had some practice with you guys. <laughs> yeah. and, and Diane's story, because she has a similar story. Her parents were deported. She stayed here uh, living with them. Um, you know, neighbors took her in. So um, she must have felt like, man, this is like my story. Yeah, I think that's why she was super excited to be a part of a film like this. And um, honestly, she's, she's, she's inspired me to really start to understand this Latinx movement. And, you know, I, I never really like used any sort of expression like that. And, um, you know, it's, it's, it's powerful. I think that we need, uh, Unnecessary. people like her to, to speak on that. And, uh, her experience is very different than our experience, but it doesn't mean we can't come together and tell a, a story that's gonna, um, hopefully inspire and make, you know, people like our cousins, saw this film at a drive-in movie theater and, and they came up to me and were like, yo, this story is my story. Like mm -hmm. this, this is my favorite film you've ever done. And it was like, really beautiful yo. to see our, our family's reaction for sure. Cause they've only, you know, they've seen us in the things, but to see us as these characters representing Colombian culture authentically mm -hmm. for maybe the first time, you know what I mean? Um, yeah. Si está tan mamado que otros decían por usted, empieza a buscar cómo es que se van a independizar. This reminded me that I don't have any Colombian friends because the Spanish was so different from what I'm used to hearing. You know, like Narcos, they toned it down, right? Yeah. Um, the freaking actor in Narcos is Brazilian, so. Yeah, exactly. 
So how was it? I mean, you guys grew up here like I did. So I, we don't have the same accent like, you know, people do from Colombia. So how did you um, get into the groove? I wouldn't say that we had to prepare for that because Spanish is our first language. It's just not our dominant language. Mm -hmm. uh, English, English is our dominant language. Uh, I never speak to Mateo in Spanish unless, you know, I'm trying to say something for someone not to understand or, uh, you know, just in, in key moments. So, um, I mean, acting in general, imp improvisation is very difficult. Um, so add another layer of, of a different language to that and, and it becomes, you know, 10 times more difficult. Plus it being a period piece, you know, the year 2000, you can't use the same slang um, that, you know, would come to our heads uh, now. So Stone and Eddie had to correct us a lot on that. Um, and really it's, it's taking matters into our own hands because there's, there's only to a certain point are the directors and the writers and everyone gonna be like, yo, this and that, like, you gotta be like, yo, that didn't feel right. The performance wasn't this and that. Mm -hmm. Like you have to take the matters into your own hands. Um, and and it's, a it's a beautiful thing that me and Mateo are siblings in real life because, you know, we could grab each other and, and make each other angry before a scene which you could never do that with uh, another actor without them kind of like being like, yo, this dude's taking it too far. You're in mm. my space. <laughs> yeah. Gonna do. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, could you relate to the characters in their, they, they love each other, but they've got some differences. Um, you know, one, you know, one, you're a science um, prodigy and the other one, he's an artist, but the parents don't really see a value in that, right? Um, so how, do you, how did you relate to those characters? Well, in, in terms of like, you know, they're 16 years old, 17 years old, like it was a lot of regression that had to happen. Like, I, I wouldn't say I, I relate with him almost at all. You know, I was like, God, dude, why is this kid so uh, head, like head first with everything, you know? Um, so, you know, Esteban had to explain to me like, yo, you're a teenager. Like my, 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 I don't remember if it's his little brother or older brother was like this and it's like yeah I mean you're right there's no reason to half-ass the um you know those qualities I think foundationally though you know we can all relate with the struggle you know what I mean mm -hmm. everybody has some sort of inner struggle or outer struggle you know to some extent so relating to our character's struggle was really the essence of all that we really had to relate with to be able to understand these characters right um so just really tapping into the psychology of what they were experiencing, the culture shock that, you know, we were both born here, but at the same time, you know, to a certain extent, you know, going to school was a culture shock for me, I'm sure. Moises taught me English. You know, I didn't speak English until I was like three or four. Um, going to school, he had to go to ESOL to learn English. And, you know, we don't remember that necessarily, but I'm sure it was, you know, so um, in terms of, you know, Carly is vastly more intelligent than, than I am in real life, you know, very, intellectually is superior to me in real life. Um, so I had to do definitely some research uh, on the things that he was talking about. I had a couple of classes with, uh, with a physicist to just kind of tap into that and listening to metal music, which I'm not necessarily, you know, it's not the music that I go to to listen, but through the journey of this film, I was able to, um, to have an appreciation for it. But the most difficult part was just me and my brother speaking Spanish to each other, truthfully, because it's so not what we're um, about. You know, we don't do that, like he was explaining earlier. So that uh, aspect to it was probably the most difficult because everything else, you know, we could relate. We're actually brothers. We actually go through stuff. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So. And so I wanted to ask you, you guys are Disney Channel alums. How has the, you know, has it been tough, the transition from, you know, it's a different kind of acting on Disney Channel to, you know, going to mainstream. It's kind of like you have to change your whole demeanor almost. So how has it been for you guys? that trans I mean, it's been a while, but. Yeah, it's been 15 years. How's it going so far? <laughs> That's what I was going to say. Uh, 15 years can do a lot. Um, this, this job is a lot about other people's opinions and other people's, uh, you know, vision yeah as an actor you have to hopefully be following a, a, a director a person that's guiding you and and knows that this character is doing this and that's why this person's entering here and then that's why they clash so I understand mm -hmm. you have to be in that position um but what you say like coming from you know I think we're both feel very blessed to have been a part of those shows because now 
now is really the payoff. You know, I have 20 year old cats coming up to me like, yo, you're that dude from kicking it. Like I love, you know, you, you're my childhood and blah, blah, blah. And now it's like a different, you know, it's like, wow, that's, it's really dope, you know, to, to some extent and, um, you know, growing and just progressing. And at least I, I feel like we're just lucky that we kind of, we kind of know what we want to a certain extent, you know, we know we want to be part of something authentic and, you know, being on Disney really, you know, you really get the contrast, you know, mm-hmm. we really now know what's real, what feels authentic, what feels true because of, you know, sometimes on Disney, obviously you got a little more over the top, a little more of this. So it's like, but, but not only that, like sure over the top and all that stuff, but you're 10 years old. So like, yeah, that's just true. work for you, you true. know? Um, it's when you become six, when, you, when you're 16, your show ends and you have to decide whether you're going to university or continuing acting that it really becomes super difficult because now you, you're known as this person and it's harder to get jobs. So you really have to try things, try independent films like this story called Toys House. And you're like, okay, what is this? It turned into The Kings of Summer, which is the movie that really changed my life. The first time I went to Sundance, the uh, movie was made for less than a million dollars. No trailers, no nothing. We, it was just a family making a movie that we believed in. And low-key a cult classic now. I it mean, it, it, I'm really proud of that. And and that led to being able to do Monos. And that and Monos is my biggest achievement, the most mm-hmm. difficult thing I've ever done in my life. And and then going back to Columbia to work with my brother, like that's, of course, after we're, a short yeah. film that we did six years ago, of yeah. course, that sounds amazing. Yeah. Um, so we're grateful for the progression, but we can't say that we haven't been doing it and you know putting in the work for many, many, many years. Um, mm. It's literally a lifestyle. We work at it every day. Um, we're always trying to refine. And, and not only that, Mateo's become a musician in the last 10 years. And I, since I was, well, 14, I started taking pictures, but 18, I started taking pictures on film. I have almost 10 years of photography mm-hmm. uh, experience from being able to use, you know, per diem or, or money to buy an expensive camera that, no, you know, my mom was like, are you serious? Mm-hmm. You want me to get you this? And I'm like, mom, I really want this. Mm-hmm. So, you know, those are those are the blessings that uh, come with working at a young age and sacrificing school and a bunch of stuff. Well, I wanted to ask you, you were talking about vision and you're talking about your own projects. So you did Monos and now you did this film, you're uh, executive producers as well. You know, are you would you like to re- more, do more and reconnect with with your culture? Um, I want to tell stories. Is that all going to be? Or is that going to be a Colombian story or a story from New York or a story from Italy? Like I, I, I BS Italian because it's so close to Spanish, you know? So I definitely have ideas that I want to do uh, in the future. Um, and it's going to be a clash. It's going to be a mix. It's going to be something strange, hopefully. The number one thing for us is like, is it true? Are we excited about it? And, you know, is it something that we see ourselves really putting everything into? And if, if it checks off all the boxes, then we're just going to jump right into it, mm-hmm. you know? All right. Well, thank you so much. Great performances. I think Holly's going to come calling even more for you guys because you guys pulled off a really, really compelling relationship and it was riveting. Um, so congratulations on that. Thank you, thank you very so much. much. Okay. Awesome talking to you. Hasta luego. Okay. Hasta luego. Ciao, please. Ciao. <laughs>